And away we go. Here's the scrum. That's the algorithmic scrum. Spikes up and down. Hey Steve, I, I lost money yesterday, I didn't take any more trades, I was preoccupied with the dog and stuff, so she's back with me now, so and she's in good spirits, I don't know where she is, but she's in good spirits, which is uh, which is good, so I've got, I've, got my po I've got my pooch back, morning hi there, J Spec, yeah well, it's the um, it's the big mover this morning, so I, I'm, as, I'm pretty sure I, you and I are not the only ones that took this trade. I just tried to get in for the move back up, but very good news. Afternoon, Dave. Good to see you back. Morning, Captain. Looking for a candle with a newer high. got um we've got cpi data dropping in half an hour yeah so i wouldn't be holding anything at the bottom of the hour from about 20 past eight onwards i would uh, get out of your positions uh unless you're holding long term and it doesn't matter but i'd get out of your positions at, the, at, at about when you passed, um, put all your positions and wait for the market to uh, to start. Unless you're planning speculating, if you're thinking that the uh, the market's going to sell off, then take a short position. If you think it's going to rally, take a long position. But I would be uh, reluctant to take a, a a big position. How was you? What are you doing in the curtain, weirdo? What a bloody stage strip show, you know? Don't know what to do with herself now. She's got patches of, of bald all over her now, where they've, uh, where they've shaved her fur for the, um, for the operation. She's, she seems herself. I need to give her some medicine later. Yeah, good, good, um, good thing to do. Just lock your montage there, J Spec. Probably not the best idea to trade at the moment. Don't do what I'm doing. 
<laughs> it's probably what I should be saying. I did the bad thing where I've averaged down, absolutely. I'm looking for a, a, a bounce again. Yeah, I'm looking for a bounce on the VWAP here. I have a double bottom formation on the uh, on the one and two minute. Good earnings, by the way. Ben CPL, good earnings today. Net capital. It's 100x relative volume, almost. Done 3.6 million this morning. It normally does like 48,000 on any given day. Volume just dropped out. A bit of extra volume, and that um, will be okay. A bit of bullish volume. Ah, oh, stop. I mean, she's not out of the woods yet. I've got to take her back on Friday for uh, for a checkup, uh, and uh, we'll see how she's doing then. We'll check the stitches and everything else. I won't be asking her to jump for her treats today. <laughs> That's assuming she gets treats. That's that's all down to you guys. Up to you if you want to if you want to treat the beast in there while she's convalescing. She stinks though. She really does stink. It's like uh, when they operated on her and they removed the infection and everything. It's like they must have poured it over the top of her um, because she stinks. I can't back her yet until probably next week. I want to re reintroduce the, um, the infection, you know? No, I, di I didn't tell her still. Like I say, I, was, I just wasn't on it yesterday. Um, it was a, a red day. I didn't trade anymore. I just, uh, obviously, I was concerned with this one. I had to pick her up in the uh, in the evening as well. So I was just looking after this, uh, this beast. Got my beast back, so... I don't know, maybe. I'll have a look, Jay Speck. Doesn't look like it. I met, yesterday's, I don't know, it, I think it had a reverse split yesterday. That was, that was yesterday, um... J spec as opposed to today. It, it might well have done. I, I'll have to, I'd have to check that from yesterday. That's, it gapped up yesterday, not today. gets over three dollars I'm I'm not gonna hold it much longer back over tap three dollars there I'll just get get a profitable trade out of this and I'll get it the head of the CPI data yeah I've scaled in already and then I average down probably not the best thing to do we saw that that doesn't work yesterday didn't we
takes a little bit off. It goes if it moves up. Gets me profitable, great. If not, there we go. Let's get over 310. There we go, lock a little bit in. That wasn't the best idea. But it's profitable now. That's okay. At least. Well, move up. Let's see if we can get the quarter dollar here. Morning, user. Well, I'm trying. I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm the swinging for the fences. I've got. I mean, I've had a good year. I, I had. I've had a good run up, and I'm trying to. I, I'm just. I am swinging for the fences a little bit. To be fair, uh, I lost over 20 k yesterday, so I'm, I'm looking for some big size. I'm going to be taking some big, some big setups this uh, today and tomorrow, but it's going to be calculated. I'm not just going to be jumping in willy-nilly. I'm probably going to be trading a couple of ETFs today, maybe, as well. So we'll see. I don't normally trade ETFs, but it's CPI day, and uh, I could trade AMD or, or you know, one of the one of the stocks that um, tracks the, uh, the S&P 500, but we'll see. It's not so much nerves of steel, um, J-Spec, it's just... You know, played this game before. Many times. And you've got to be not afraid to take a loss. I think that's that's what causes a lot of people to take bigger losses and makes them cut the, the, the positions too early or hold on to them too long is that they're afraid to take a big loss. And you've got to understand that you are going to take a loss. There's going to be times when you lose money. That's That comes with the territory. But as soon as you get that into your head, as soon as you accept the fact that you're going to make trades that go against you, and sometimes you're going to make trades like yesterday where every trade you take goes against you. Uh, and to be fair, yesterday I, I, I tried a, a, a different strategy that I don't normally trade, and it, it didn't go my way, so I won't be doing that again. Uh, and... Um, but as, as I always keep saying, every time you deviate from your strategy, it usually results in a, in a, a red day. Yesterday was a big red day. Uh, so let's see if we can't compensate for it today. Well, at the moment, I'm looking at um, uh, the in, inverse, um, the, the inverse uh, S&P 500. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, the, the leveraged S&P 500, the uh, SPXL. So it's a leveraged S&P 500. So I, I'll short it or I'll go long on it because it's a, it's a 3x leveraged uh, um, ETF. It's like the SPY. It's a, sister, it's a sister of the SPY, but it's leveraged three times. I might, I'll be looking at the um, the TQs as well. So that might be the, the NASDAQ. So that's the, the sister of the, of the Qs, QQQ. Uh, but again, that's leveraged three times. So, and they're cheaper than the actual uh, the other the other index. So the the, um, uh, the SPXL is a, a three times leveraged uh, ETF, but it's much cheaper. It's, it's like seventy dollars a share. So it's like trading AMD, and you get the big similar size big swings as you would with AMD. Um, but it's exactly like you would get with the SPY, only three times the, the, the difference. As opposed to four hundred dollars a share with the, with the spike, so yeah, we'll see. <laughs> okay, is that for the World Cup? Yeah, the World Cup starts today again. So it's the semi-finals today, isn't it? Not that I didn't give a monkey's chuff. Come on, Morocco or Argentina. Uh, do you know what? I would actually like Argentina to win it. 
uh, just put that Messi versus Ronaldo debate to bed once and for all, because if Argentina win it, then there's just no debate. That's 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 what I'd say. Uh, so yeah, let, let's uh, Argentina to win uh, against um, against France with a dodgy, really dodgy decision uh, in stoppage time, and Messi scores the penalty to win the World Cup for Argentina. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Croatia. Yeah, go on, Dejan. He's one of our own, Dejan. I wouldn't mind if Croatia won it, or, or Morocco even. The under everybody's got everybody roots for the underdog. Everybody loves an underdog story. So if Morocco went on to win the World Cup, that would be absolutely amazing. Can't see it, but then again, it's possible. Greece did, after all, win the um, win the Euros, and so did Denmark, and they weren't even supposed to be there. So, you know. Modric is an absolute superstar. He is. He's getting on a bit. He's not the player he was four years ago. Uh, there is, by all intents and purposes, there could well be a um, a repeat of, uh, of the 2018 final. Croatia versus France. That's more than, uh, more than a possibility. Uh, yeah, I can check Mullen Autos. It's, I'll tell you what it's doing. Not very much. There you go. 22 cents. Again. It's back up to 22 cents. From 20 cents. So huge whopping 10% gain. 15%. Uh, this is uh, it's a crap stock. Uh, uh, my opinion. Not financial advice. I'm, it's just my opinion. I'm just a fat guy on the internet. But I hate this stock. It's like... Like 10 billion shares in the float, um, promises to do much, no, it doesn't actually do anything, it's riddled with debt, doesn't actually produce anything, doesn't make anything, even though they pretend to. Um, it's a horrible company. It's, they're not making any money. They're, they're, they're hemorrhaging money, hand over fist. So, um, yeah, Mullen Automotive, and they're just going to get absolutely swallowed up by one of the big boys. That's what's going to happen. That's what they're hoping for. Best thing that they could do, if, if people, if, if they were in, really interested, they should, what are you doing? I know, you, I know you're in pain, but I'll give you some painkillers later. I can't give you any yet. I'll give it to you later. Yeah, it might have good news for now, but it'll have bad news again later. It's, it's just, I mean, it's, look at this on the daily. You'll see what I'm talking about. Um... It's just not... It's just been selling off all year. I mean, it went up... It had really good news. went up to almost $4 back in March. And it's just been selling off since then. Garbage company. But then again, most of, the, most of these companies that I trade out are... They're just pure garbage anyway. So I wouldn't hold them long term. That looks to be done for the day. Okay, so yeah, Mullen, Mullen hitting the scanners here. INDP. Why are you moving up? Why did you move up? That's a good question. Let's have a look. So this is a terrible music. I'm falling asleep already. It's hypnotic. It's the sort of stuff you... You, you'd listen to if you were um, in a massage parlor. That's better. Okay, so Indaptus Therapeutics. No news. Yes, there is. Indaptus Therapeutics announces the initiation of first inhuman open label dose escalation and expansion molecular phase one clinical trial of decoy 20 in patients with advanced solid tumors. Interesting. I actually understood what I was talking about there. It might not have sounded like I did, but I actually understood that. Cancer treatment. It's a four and a half million float stock. It'll be worth... Uh, I'll put that on the watch list. Why not? And um,
What else am I looking at? No, that's not enough volume on uh, LVTX. No one here. That's too small in terms of a stock. I don't really want to be trading that. Oh, just it's going to be it's going to be a relatively quiet morning until we get the um, uh, CPI data drop in ten minutes. Well, if you're really glad that she's on super chip, hit that uh, tap that screen ten times. Let's get some. Uh, Yes, just be quiet, attention, attention seeker, that's what you are. Come on, come on, come on, give me a cuddle. Come here, come here, come here to me. There you go, there you go. There you go, yeah? Yeah, you got the, you got the damn chain from drinking, yeah? You will wag your tail, yeah? Yeah, you miss me, locked up in a cage every night, yeah? You didn't like that for a couple of days, did you? Eh? In your eyes, like that as well. You've got bunk in your eyes. And a clean. Eh? Yeah. Well, she's back. Ten minutes till the uh, till the S and P five hundred drops its news. I'd say the S and P till uh, till till the CPI data drops. That's what we're waiting for. So. I'll get the uh, I'll get the news out. So this is um, Novalis. It did do a sp I believe it was a split yesterday. It's got also got news today. Let me just have a look what happened yesterday with Novalis. Yeah, it was a 100 to 1 reverse stock split uh, yesterday, Novellis. So that's what, see, that's what Mullen should do. They should do a nice 100 to 1 stock split and they'd be able to trade at this kind of level. And people would take notice and, and, and there'd be a lot more interest in, uh, in that. Like I say, they've got like a billion shares in the float and it's just not helping them. Uh, so, news today for Novellis. Um, Novellis highlights publication of results from a 10 year analysis of. Aquadex Flex Floor System, an American Heart Journal Plus. So, uh, they've announced data supporting lower heart failure hospital hospitalizations and readmissions with Aquadex. So, that's why that's moving up. That was at the top of the hour. That's why you got this, this little pump here. Um, pull back and then it's moved up again. So, it's, it needs more volume, but. It's got a catalyst. I'll tell you what, I'll do video capture. There we go, better. I think we're done there. I wouldn't worry about that uh, about the camera getting frozen, Vin. It's it's not like you you're watching my face anyway.
going to put spy on this little window here. Move that over there. I don't even know what you're barking at, you little silly womble that you are. You bear paws. Thick, mighty bear paws she has. It's like a little, little honey bear. Good to have her back, though. It was weird yesterday, in particular. It was like, it was almost like I could feel a presence. You know, it's like when you, you know, when you're a, you're a new parent and you can hear the baby crying, but the baby's not crying. Uh, or else, when you go out, you manage to get a babysitter and you go out and you can hear someone shouting "dad" or, or "mom" or whatever, and think it's your kids and, like, hey, and, and it's not them. It was a bit like that yesterday with her. I could hear her pottering about and snoring, but there was nobody there. It wasn't her. Uh, I'm getting uh, I'm getting someone to uh, to uh, house sit for me. Costed me a small fortune, but um, I was going to put her in a kennel, but I can't now. Um, a because she needs vac uh, she needs to get vaccinated. Uh, she needs a kennel cough booster, and I can't do that while she's on antibiotics. So that's one. But two, I wouldn't feel comfortable. I need I need. Oh, here we go. Christmas miracle. Why CPI data on Tuesday should kickstart a Santa Claus rally. Let's see. I'm not so sure, but we'll see. Well, might have been the precursor to a sell-off. Oh my goodness! So there you go. That's that's why the uh, the, the move just popped up. Uh, that wick popped up. And that was um, Sam Bankman Freed arrested. News just popped out. So SBF just just been arrested. About bloody time! I thought he was going to get away scot free. So uh, yeah. No time for trust fund babies like that that, that commit penis crimes and, and then think that they're immune to it because I didn't know what I was doing. You didn't know what you was doing when you were appointed CEO of the bloody company, you were a moron. Everybody knew you didn't know what you were doing. You're just a, a, a trust fund muppet. Yeah, I think that potentially could be a, bear, a, bear tra a, a bull trap on the, um, on the spy, not a bear trap. A bull trap. Oh, so yeah, so so the um, SPXL, it's a spy, but it's a leveraged spy, so. It's a little bit cheaper, it's a little bit cheaper than the uh, than the actual spy and uh, it gets three times the move, it's three times the volatile. We should get some data dropping right now, right about now. We should get the, the watch, watch for a big, either a big pump or a big drop. Uh, it went without me. Didn't get a fill. Run 
at 78. Big gamble. But the data's dropping. 7.1 versus 7.3 estimate. So it's good data. That's a CPI year over year. Everything's breaking high, so I'm just going to hold this. Expecting this to go back up. Could be wrong, but we'll see. It is an ETF, Jack. It absolutely is. It's the um, it's the leveraged uh, S and P five hundred ETF. It's the um, SPXL. It's, a, it's 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 the sister of the uh, of the spy. It's, it's it's same same data as the as the spy, but it's leveraged over three times. So. I missed the initial pump. I didn't get filled. It just went without me, and that's what happened. That's, that's sometimes that's what happens. I'm expecting this to continue up because the the data is good data. CPI data is good. It, it could be risky. Seventy six. I'll get out. Normally we've got a 3% move. We've got 2.7% on the SPY. So I missed the big move. Looks like. And I didn't get filled. Kavana pop. Everything's popping. Yeah. I would have got filled if it was a bloody paper. You know what? I'm just going to go all in on this when it's if it turns around. enough didn't have enough buying power for it to double down The S&P 500, need that to move back up again. Well, it was a gamble worth taking. And again, once again, not paying off. So I'm not very good at gambling. In case you hadn't realised. I'll stick to the strategy. So I've just gone 90% of my buying power. See where that takes me. Well, I'm holding. I'm holding. 17k down at the moment, Manny. 18k. If this, if this pops, I'm just going to have to get out. And uh, keeps keeps selling. I'm just definitely going to have to get out. Thing is, this this is gonna this will turn around at some stage, and it will probably already stop me out. So that's a big risk for me. Basically, when you've got a 
$120,000 account. You can buy even it's e minis you need you need futures to buy the e mini. Uh, so I bought the SPXL, which is like uh, a leveraged the spy is like the e mini. It's an ETF that uh, that you can buy, so it's it, it, it's as good as the e mini. But this the spy is um, four hundred dollars a share, so it's, it's about the same as the e mini. Are we going to find our way back up? That's the question, because I need it to. I can't have another 20 grand loss today. Two in a row. Just before Christmas. That's putting all the good work that we've put in all year to bed. But there you go. Can't even set a stop just yet. Breaking laws still. So much for this Christmas uh, Christmas rally, Santa rally. In this indices spike following lighter than expected November CPI data. Yeah, but now they're pulling back. Maybe I should have gone short instead of uh, instead of long. Would have been a lot easier to um, to manage. Uh, no, I'm not good at the moment, Imran. I'm, I'm I'm holding this position purely on hopium that we're uh, we're actually going to get a turnaround. Don't trade on hopium, kids. This is not this is not a trading strategy. This is just pure gambling. <laughs> it absolutely was uh, Alistair, I need to publish that one. Oh no, I got the guess right, it's just I got the the fill was 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 wrong. So I tried to get in as it uh, as it broke these highs here at 73 and it didn't fill me and then moved up again. I was sat there with a bloody 5,000 share order and just as it was taking off. Well, it, it's not so much don't don't try to guess the market it was don't chase the momentum is what I should have uh, what you should be saying, and uh, that's what I did. Once I missed it, I should have looked to um, look for the likes of AMD or something else. But hey, look, let's see what happens. Could come good to me today, we'll see. Might not do, probably won't. But let's see how much of a, um, a loss I'm going to take today. Before the market opens. So, swing low, 74.50. Okay, so there we go. There's, 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 my new, there's my new get out of this, 74.50. Why not cut the loss? Because I'll be kicking myself later. It's like um, if you if you play in the lottery and you play the same numbers every week, and then the one week that you don't play those numbers, it comes in. You, you're gonna be on the verge of suicide. Now, if I cut this now for a big loss, as it's on its upturn, uh, 15k loss. If I cut this now for a 15k loss and it goes back up to 77, I'm gonna be absolutely mortified. Uh, 
Now, I don't mind a gradual increase back up to the highs of 78. That'll do me. Well, if it further goes further down, if it if it breaks new lows, I'm getting out. That's as simple as that. I should have said 74.50 was the low it got to. So I'm, I'm you know, it's heavy risk for not much reward. If I'm being honest, it's a heavy risk for for not much reward. I'm, I'm probably getting about a, a five to one on my money here, in or one to five on my money. So I'm risking about 25k here now. Probably get 5k out of it. Yes, Manny. Uh, well, that's that's the problem. You 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 can't. You've got to be a lot quicker than that. And it, it went down so quick. I couldn't because um, I was up here, and then it went down so quick. I couldn't have got out for 3k. It was already like 10k in the hole when it uh, when it reached reached this. So then it started to pop again. I thought, okay, it's coming back up. Old, and it's it flushed again. So that's that's what happens. Now we've got. Not as much um, volatility right now. 68, 70 cents on the ATR right now. So, hey, look. I'm under 10k. Let's see. Yeah, the spy went up and touched 414. I'm, I'm hoping it goes back up there, Abraham, right now, because effectively I'm trading the spy here. It's just a different ETF. Spy's an ETF. This is a different ETF. I'm, I'm effectively trading the, the same as the spy, only this is three times leverage. So the spy went up uh, to, well, currently the spy is like 2.7% up. So uh, 270 base points up whereas this one that i'm trading is exactly the same movement but three times leverage so it's um 8.2 percent up which is why i traded this one now if i just traded the spy i wouldn't have taken as big a hit yeah <laughs> it's it's lovely to hear that snore again from my own perspective I was so worried. I thought I actually thought on Sunday. I actually thought she died. At one point on Sunday, I thought she died. She um, she was on the on the sofa. There was no noise coming from her. I couldn't see her breathing, and I tried to move her off the sofa. She flopped on the floor, and there was no movement. I actually thought she died. It terrified me. Um, bullish, bullish, Imran. I'm bullish on the spy across the course of the day today. I think we'll now get. Uh, a nice little Christmas rally, sand, what's, what's known as a Santa rally, towards the end of the year. We'll have a couple of down days, of course we will, but I think most of the days between now and the end of the year are going to be bullish. How old is Miyako? She's two years old, just over two years old. She turned two in August. So she's like a teenager, you know? Right now. She's equivalent to, in dog years, she's equivalent to, to as a, she's the equivalent of a teenager. Well, that's down to you. that's down to you, Imran. I don't offer financial advice, as you know. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a fat guy on the internet with an opinion.
dogs are better people than people. That's all I'm saying about on that subject. <laughs> Got a bit of a pullback here. <laughs> a lot of people like my opinion for some strange reason. You're all nuts. You're all nuts. I mean, I've got uh, literally thousands of people following my channel, and you, a lot of you, you're all you're all insane. I make out like I know what I'm doing. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I'm just here helping you guys learn how to trade. Or, as per yesterday, how not to trade. And as per today, so far, how not to trade. <laughs> the Trade with Tony Club. If was it Gretchen or Mark said, I wouldn't really want to be a member of any club that would have me. It's certainly not the cult, that, uh, the, the, the cult leader that I've become on this bloody channel. <laughs> I'm actually a lot less stressed now, Alistair. I was stressed before. I mean, I can I can take a 10 grand hit and I can recover it intraday. I've, I've done that many times. But I just, um, I timed, well, I didn't time it wrong. I uh, I didn't get filled when I wanted to get filled. I'd be in a, a huge world of profit right now if I got filled at, uh, at 73, 74 like I wanted to. But he's stupid thing. We'll be able to watch that back on the. Um, you'll be able to watch that back on the on the replay later, um, or, or just just rewind it. You'll be able to watch it back. You to put the order in, and it just skips straight past it. So much for fast executions on. Um, and that's a whole liquidity thing. If there's nobody buying, if there's nobody selling at that price, and there's nobody going to want to sell when it's moving up that quick, they're all going to be wanting to buy. So if there's nobody selling, you're not going to get filled. It's it's the price just keeps going up. It's a liquidity thing. Well, I don't know about honesty. I mean, ask yourself: Would you really buy a used car off this face? Yeah, but it's a good community. We've got a nice little group here. It's not uh, might not be the busiest a um, busiest on the interweb, but. It's a nice little group we've got here. And I think at the open, this is going to go up. So I'm going to hold this. I'm going to hold this into the, into the, into the open. So I've got 40 minutes to the open. I'm pretty much maxed out. I've got another $18,000 of buying power I could use. <laughs> so I'm, I've got 90% of my buying power um, in, in this trade right now. Uh, so... I'm pretty much pretty much maxed out. I didn't hear about ICT funny D poll. What, what's what's the going on? Well, you can have a look at that on the spy right now. So it's exactly the same pattern. Um, Samuel, it's exactly the same pattern because it's the same data. It's just I've got a three times leverage on this uh, on the uh, SPXL. Go big or go home. That's what the that's what my ex-wife said to me, so I went home. Oh, I don't know about that super chip. There's a there's a couple of others out there that uh, that do trade live, uh, but I think what it what it is is a lot of them are so bogus that they don't like to show the losses, and you've got to accept that. In trading, you've got to make losses. You're going to make, you're going to lose money. At some stage, you're going to lose money. So I, I just kind of present this as what, what's and all, because yes, I have a strategy that works. Do I trade that strategy every day? No. Clearly, yesterday I deviated from it with a completely different new strategy that was just terrible. But then again, my, my whole mind wasn't on the trading yesterday. I had other things on my mind, which you, you'll be happy to know uh, if you've uh, just joined me. If you just joined us, you'll be happy to know that this, the snoring chair is back. Snoring. And uh, it's good to have her back. But, yeah, my mind was on that yesterday more than on this. But back, now we're under $5,000 loss. So this looks like it could be 
worth a swing across the course of the day. Let's see what happens. If this if this, if this can get up to 78, um, 78 bucks, I'll be a very happy bunny. Back up to uh, my initial entry, maybe 79, I'll be ecstatic. If we can get to 79, I'll be over the moon because that'll pretty much um, cover yesterday's losses. But let's see. Let's get to 77 first. Yeah, Amazon's having a great time because it's following the market. I've not even looked at it, but I'm going to assume Amazon's having a great time. It's the same It's the same pattern. It's the exact same pattern. You could have traded Amazon for a little bit more a little bit more on the price. You wouldn't have got the same um, the same move. So Amazon currently up 4.4%. Uh the S&P 500 spy is up the 3%. The SPXL, which is why I traded it, because I'm getting three times leverage on this. It moves three times as big. So this is currently up 8.6%. I'm looking for a 10% move on this, ideally, today. But they're all following the same pattern. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm bullish on this now. We should get a little bit of a rally for the rest of the day. There'll be ups and downs, but now I know that I can get out for a minimal loss. I can get out for about 12k down if uh, worst case, if I get a, a full retracement. So that's what I'm looking for today. D local. Why would I watch them? To, why would I watch that today? What's has he got? Uh, has he got news there? Double R? Is it, is it a, a big catalyst on D local? Is it something that you're holding bags on and you're hoping for it to move up? It's already up eight percent. Yeah, well, so's the um, SPXL here, this, this ETF that I'm trading. This one's up eight point two percent. I mean, D locals up at fourteen dollars right now. Let's put this on. But there's nobody trading it. You can't. You can't trade the local. So I'll, I'll put this on here while I'm watching. The, while this is pulling back. So this is the local. There's nobody trading it. Seven thousand shares. I've checked it out. Look, it's it's a short squeeze, quick pump and dump today. Look, don't get involved in quick pump and dumps and short squeeze and things like that. It you it will wreck you. Um, this there's nobody trading it. Just nobody trading it. So wait for the volume to come in. You might be right. It might, might get some volume and move up. If that's the case, great. But don't don't trade this because it's uh, uh, it's a short squeeze. In fact, let's have a look. What, what makes you think it's a short squeeze? It's not a short squeeze at all. Bullshit. Pardon my French. Uh, that'll probably get demonetized for that. It's seven percent short interest. So it's not a short squeeze at all. It's a, a hundred and four million float and the seven and a half million short. So it's not a short squeeze. Uh, so, sorry, Double R, but um, uh, it's it's <laughs> it, it, you wait for the volume to come in. Don't do not trade this because D Low says that uh, this is uh, this is going to move. Um, it's up currently seven and a half percent on the day, which is bullish, but it's up with no volume. There's nobody trading it. And uh, and it's not a short squeeze because there's not a lot of short interest. So who's going to who's who are they going to squeeze out of it? Hundred million in shares, and they're going to squeeze seven um, seven million out. That, that's not enough to trigger a, a squeeze. I'm sorry. You see that as soon as someone says that nobody knows about a particular stock that's going to that's a, that's big red flag because if nobody knows, it's not going to do it. 
you need volume one key thing that you need for reliable moves is volume which means the more people know the better so if you've got something that's moving up if you've got something that's got good clinical trial data if you've got something that's got an, a new strategic investor w whatever it is um that's good news and the more people know about that good news the better that's what will make a, something move up that's what could potentially trigger a short squeeze but not at seven percent short interest sorry It's always, D-Lo always averaged around $20. No, it didn't. If you're going to come on here and start spouting nonsense, um, at least get your facts right, okay? So this is the daily, okay? It sold off hard. Had its little bounce, and then it's kind of down around $12, $13. Sold off hard. Averaging twenty dollars. No, it had a, it had a support of twenty dollars previously, but it's not been averaging twenty dollars. It's actually been higher. Doesn't mean it's going to go back up there. So if you t take your bags and uh, and do one with it, that's just another one coming on the channel expecting to to pump a stock because they're holding bags up at twenty dollars. I've not that <laughs> I've not got that kind of influence of the market. Go and have it. Go and go onto Rossi's channel and see if he'll pump it for you. <laughs> uh okay if you think it's going to go up to 18 dollars today good luck buddy okay you keep telling me i'm just not going to listen will the market close in the red i hope not i'm waiting for this to get over 77 <laughs> oh it's just uh, some some guys just um trying to trying to pump dlo and uh, there's nobody trading it quite frankly there's, there's zero volume i will say zero volume it's like seven thousand people seven thousand shares traded all day so far so you'd have to be if i took five thousand shares of, of that i wouldn't be able to sell them because nobody's nobody wants to buy it um, I wouldn't be able to get filled because there's nobody selling it. So, yeah, that's um, that's D local. What price am I at now? So I'm I'm kind of I was going to go seventy four fifty. Now I'm going to go seven seventy five fifty. It drops drops down to seven seventy five fifty. I'll get it. I'm at seventy seven. So I'm giving it. Dollar fifty. What's my PL for this year? Well, my gross PL, I'm, I'm just shy of 1.2 million uh, at, at the moment, um, Alexander. Just shy of 1.2. Just, I'm, a, I'm about 50, 54,000 net. I, I, after yesterday, I think I'm 54,000 net shy of a 1 million net year. So, yeah, we'll see. Well, go make money on that stock. If you don't need to pump it on this channel, look, people come on my channel for a bit of... Um, bit of knowledge rather than a bit of hope now they like to see me trading and losing money because uh, i get into positions like this and i hope that this is going to go up above 77 dollars and it is actually going to go up above 77 dollars i just hope it's going to go up to 77 dollars before it hits 75 so uh look we're going to be bullish this is going to be bullish today and, and I'm, I'm confident of that Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get too hung up on that. I hear what you're saying, funny deep hole, uh, but today's different. It's, it's not a normal Tuesday. We've got the CPI data drop today. Tomorrow we've got uh, the um, FOMC conference, and they'll be dropping the uh, the, the, the the latest um, uh, interest rate hike, which is if. Estimates are correct. They're going to be doing a 50 base points hike tomorrow, which will again send the market into another frenzy upwards. 
so that's that's what I would say. What do you do about taxes as I'm UK based? Well, actually, Alexander, I'm not UK based. But I do pay taxes and I pay a stupid amount of taxes. So basically, what, the way I would advise anybody to do it is depending on where you are, if you're in a if you're in a tax haven, then you might get away with it. But otherwise, take your profits, split it into three. Put, this is what I do. You put a third away for you for your for the tax man when he comes a calling. You get your CPA to work out and, and minimize your tax liability. Donate a, a sizable amount to charity. You can write it off against your taxes. Makes you look good and feel good, but also you, you're giving it to charity instead of the tax man. Just a little little thing for you to think of there. Okay. Um, so you've got the uh, a third for the tax man, put another third away for long term investments whether that's into ETFs or bonds or real estate or whatever it is that you feel comfortable long-term. And then you've got whatever the, the remaining third is, you can spend that on whatever you want. Obviously your cost of living comes out of that and then whatever luxuries and vacations and whatever else it is that you're doing um, on, on a daily basis. I'm not pumping the SPX. Why would I pump the SPX? Do you, do you realize the volume that the SPX has to... I'm not, this is the market. This is an ETF that tracks the market. I'm not exactly pumping it. I have zero control over this, um, over this stock. And this isn't, this isn't SPX. This is the SPXL. So I'm, I've, I'm basically... You look at the SPY. You look at the SPX... Uh, so if I look at the SPX, this is the SPX. So this is the actual index. Now, this is a, a because there's no one. This is this doesn't trade until the market opens. This is why you look at and you're looking at the um, the ETFs. So I can't I can't trade the S or pump the SPX, but this will gap up. This will gap up based on if you look at the SPY, which is a one to ten derivative of the um, of the SPX, but it's an ETF. So the the spy is four ten. So you'll get the SPX gapping up to uh, forty one hundred. Now the SPXL, which is also an ETF, is seventy seventy six. So this will gap up. Well, it's, it's it's moving up, but it's going to follow the the action of the market. Now the, based on where it is right now. It could sell off. I'm not saying that it's not going to sell off. I just feel like we're going to have a nice bullish day. And when the market opens, we might get a dip, but then we'll continue with a rip. So when the market opens in 20, 26 minutes, uh, let's see if we're over $77. I'll set my stop at break even if uh, if we are. I was $24,000 unrealized in the hole. Uh, and now I'm $3,500 unrealized in the hole. So by holding that position, I've managed to, rather than cutting it, as someone said when it was down here at 75, why don't you just cut it? That's why I don't, that's why I don't just cut it. Because with bullish news like the CPI data dropping today, which is a macroeconomic catalyst, affects the whole market. This is uh, an ETF that's tracking the market. I don't normally trade ETFs, but I thought, again, deviating from my strategy, uh, I'm going to try something different. CPI numbers drop. The last four times that we've had CPI numbers drop, the market's moved either up or down at least three and a half percent, at least 30, uh, 350 base points. So that's what I'm expecting again today. It might be an unrealistic expectation, but that's what I'm expecting. So we're at 2.9. So I'm expecting at least another 60 base points up, uh, move upwards on the on this on the spy on the um, on the on the s p 500 yeah it's, it's spread betting is also um tax free in ireland as well but i'm not spread betting i don't do spread betting would i recommend any brokers for beginners um no 
I wouldn't recommend any brokers for beginners. I would recommend paper trading for beginners. Do not put money into a broker until you've shown consistent levels of profitability in a simulator. That's what I would recommend for beginners. Uh, yes, yes, clippity clop, TikTok. I am expecting a, a move up, potentially a move up uh, on the uh, on the open. I'm hope I'm trading on hopium right now because I don't know whether the market's going to move up at the on the open. I really don't. It might do, might not. It might sell off. I, I I would like it to move up, and I expect I, I I believe it will move up, which is why I'm holding. I don't particularly have any thoughts about warrior trading. I don't want to diss any other um, social media influencers. Uh, uh, Rock is a good trader. He he trades a lot of the same kind of uh, strategies that I trade. Uh, he's a lot more cautious, a lot more risk averse than I am. So I will um, I will take bigger risks than he does. Uh, but he will trade bigger size. But he's he's very he doesn't hold as long as I do. So I might hold a position for a couple of hours, whereas Ross is in and out within a couple of minutes, twenty seconds even. So Ross is more of a scalper um, with his trading. He'll get in and out very very quickly. He might scale up very quickly and then get out and scale. Up. And he he did get fined. To be fair, he did get fined earlier in the year for um, for market manipulation on some of these low float stocks. Uh, but look, that's up to him. He's got a big enough following to do that. If he wants to uh, to to do that, that's that's his business. What's a good price? Well, I'm waiting for the uh, I'm waiting for the break of seventy seven. We're getting a bit of a flat top here now. Uh, seventy six eighty. I've got a high here, so 7686. But we've got a flat top forming at, uh, at the three quarter dollar level, so 7677. So 7675, got a bit of a flat top there. So if it gets above that and maybe up above 77, if it gets above 77, I mean, I'm home and host. I'm, I'm buying the um, SPXL. What at what price? You see, you can see, have a look on the uh, on the screen there, buddy. I've got the SPXL. I've got the shares, and I've got my average cost. I've also got how much unrealized I am right now. What the bid and the ask is. You can see that on the t literally on the screen in front of you. Yeah, it's it cost me seventy seven to get in. That's how much, uh, and it's currently seventy six forty seven. So I'm, I'm like about 50, 60 cents in the hole at the moment. The, the price to get it, if you was to buy it now, it'd cost you uh, 76.48, 76.40, whatever it is on the ask, 76.50. Get him. Totally agree with that. Commit to paper trading for six months to really understand what your plan is and, and how well it works for you. Try a few different strategies on paper first. Find out what works for you. Tweak it to your personality. And, and then and only when you've shown consistent level of, of profitable results, only then put money in with a broker and start small. Um, and depending where you are as to what broker I would recommend. But start small with small expectations. If you're planning on, like I've got a $5,000 a day daily expectation, but I've got a bigger account, first and foremost, and I've been doing it a lot longer. So I wouldn't consider myself a, a new trader, a beginner trader anymore. I'm an experienced trader, and I've got a larger account. However, if you've got a small account and you're a beginner, start small, maybe two, three, four thousand dollars five thousand $5,000 in your account, but trade small as well. Have an expectation, small risk of about $50 per trade, looking for $100 return per trade. And, and if you're able to do that, if you can make 100 per trade, 200, 250 a day, that's a really good income. That's, a, that's across the course of a week, $200 a day is $1,000. Think about that. Across the course of one, that's four thousand dollars. So that's two hundred dollars a day, and you're you know you've got fifty grand a year straight away. Uh, 
Uh, what's my YouTube channel? Day Trade with Tony. You can, if you go into my link tree, you can access my YouTube channel directly from my link tree. The links are in there, along with all my other socials as well. You can reach out to me, email me directly. You've got the Day Trade with Tony course there. You've got the um, uh, Benzinga, which is, uh, these these scanners are Benzinga scanners. Uh, this one's not working, the, the momentum scanner's not working at the moment, but I've got other scanners open on the same page. So we're getting kind of consolidation period coming into uh, coming into the open right now. Six months, not six days. No, I, I totally agree with that. That's why I was I, I, I wasn't trying to diss the guy. I did a little video, responded to a duetted a video on TikTok, and uh, it was a, a, a young influencer. Um, this is day 11 of me becoming a not so profitable day trader and I, I responded to that it was like day 11 you know <laughs> you, you do, you're doing better than I did because I was not so profitable on day one uh, so um, you can't learn how to day trade in a month I'll, I'll, I'll go through. I can teach you how to day trade in a month but you're not going to learn it in a month so that's that's there's a big difference between the two I, what I mean by that is I can I can teach you the principles, the strategies, the techniques, the knowledge behind it, what you're looking for, entries, exits, windows, areas of support, all of this. I can the technical analysis piece. I can teach you about the psychology of trading. I can do all of that inside a month, no problem. And the twelve lesson course that I've I've put together, you can get that in less. You can co cover that in less than a month. You're not going to learn how to trade in less than a month. Simple as. I can teach you how to be a bricklayer in seven days. Guaranteed. Uh, it, well, a, a professional bricklayer can teach you how to be a bricklayer in, in, in seven days. However, you're not going to be a competent bricklayer in seven days. You're not going to learn how to be a competent bricklayer in seven days. The practice that comes after the knowledge, on paper, yes, you might be able to say that's great, but the practice that comes after the knowledge is key. So you practice in a simulator. Oh, we're under 200, we're down to 2,000 um, uh, in, in the red now, guys. So, oh, I can I can stop sweating now. We've just tapped, we've just tapped 70, we're over $77. We're under a grand in the hole. How's the dog? She's she's doing great. Thank, thank you for asking, Liz. She's doing fantastic. Um, considering she had surgery yesterday. Uh, and uh, and she was she had a life threatening um, illness on on Sunday, so I actually thought I was going to lose her, but yeah, so she's she's fine. She's back to snoring and, and delighting the channel with her snoring. So yeah. Um. Yeah, so there's two parts to that Robinson Crusoe. So the question here is of so the people on TikTok uh, who, who can't read the, uh, the, the, the questions on, on YouTube. The question is, why do I not recommend stocks below $3? Because pre-market, all stocks below $3 has high volume. Thank you. Okay, well, there's two parts to that. Firstly, not all stocks below $3 have high volume. Um, there are some big movers, and it's, it's not so much about high volume, but high relative volume. Now, what you'll find is a lot of these stocks, like Mullen Automotive, that's a, a, at the moment 20, 25 cent stock or whatever it is, um, it's a literal penny stock, has huge volume, but it, relatively not so much. So it's about relative volume because you look at the flow versus the volume. It's all it's, it, as well. If it's Mullen Automotive, like a billion, a billion shares in the flow. So trading on a few million shares turned over and and, and, uh, and and trading is it's not such a big uh, big deal when it's a billion dollars in the flop so that's a big thing a lot of the garbage stocks um penny stocks have higher floats and they and and, and, and low price because of the garbage and the reason that they've had higher floats is that they've, they've had stock splits and all kinds of things or they've, they've thrown more more stocks and every time they get to a decent price 
they'll hit the market with another offering and dilute the shares again. So they started off with like a, a, a million shares, and then they got to a decent price. They hit it with a, a, an offering. They made some money by throwing out another million shares. So now it's a two million floor. Then it, 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 it tanks the stock. It gets to another decent price again. They'll hit it with another two million share foot, and they keep doing that. And that's how they raise money because they're not making money through their primary business. So that's one thing. Second thing is if it's a genuine low price, low float stock, so uh, that is, is under the penny stock, it's a low, what's considered a low barrier to entry. So lots of people are, are trading it, but you'll get, they're more prone to um, pump and dumps and manipulation and, and people taking big size, getting on the communities whilst they're holding, getting it pumped up and then dumping and pulling the rug. So that's why I don't trade uh, smaller price stocks. Uh, it, it came about when I was developing my strategy originally. I had a low, um, a small account, like about three, three, four thousand dollar account, and I couldn't get leverage on anything below five dollars. So I was having to trade like a cash account on these penny stocks, and for to, to make a decent, decent gains on these penny stocks, you have to take bigger size. So it's a kind of a catch-22 situation. So there's a number of reasons why I don't trade below $3. I do trade below $3, but very rarely. I, the, my, my basement floor is $2. I won't trade below $2. I'm not saying you can't make money on those, those low price stocks. You can. Last week was approved to it uh, on, on Friday. We had one stock went from 40, went 41 cents to uh, $4.60 across the course of the day. And of course... Anybody that got in that at like 50, 60, 70 cents, they were laughing all the way to the back. But, um, yeah. Yeah, so CPI data is coming below expectations. So that, that's good for the market. That's why that's moving up. So right now, I'm, I'm hoping we did get green just briefly, just a couple of moments ago on this uh, on this trade. Um, we got over uh, over 77 70, 10 pulling back a little bit but I'm okay with that I'm feeling bullish on this one at the moment I'm prepared to give it uh, a, a little bit of wiggle room now I'll, I'll, I'll risk up to 5k on this now I was 25k down with it at one stage well just shy of 25k 24 plus change uh, so that's <laughs> risk versus reward has gone out of the window but this is not part of my normal strategy I will caveat that this is not part of my normal strategy. Uh, I normally wouldn't trade an ETF on the basis of CPI data coming out. I just thought I'd try something differently today because I'm taking some big swings. I'm trying to make some big gains today. It didn't go my way. We're not far off break even. We're actually green on the day at the moment if I close this position right now. So... Ah, Penn State. So, Ventix Bioscience. That's what we're talking about today. Uh, and I'm seeing, I'm see, I'm seeing the, the 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 chart, but I'm not seeing any information on it. I'm not sure why. So it's not hit my scanners, but let's have a look. So, yeah, I'm seeing the chart. Oh, that's why it's a, it's an IPO. So that's why it's not on this. On this, that's why there's no. I've got no data on this, and it's why it's not hit my scanners. It's an IPO. Oh, oh, I think it's a SPAC, microalgo, rather an IPO or, or a, um, a, an upgrade to the Nasdaq or something along those lines. So, yeah, volume's not huge, but Worth keeping an eye on. So good spot there, um, Penn State. I'll keep my eye on that one. I'm not getting any data for it, so I'll just put that on here. Keep my eye on that one. But good call. 
FOMC meeting tomorrow, absolutely. So we're... Um, we're almost green on this. Uh, do you know when was the last CPI data released? Yeah, this morning. Yes, I do, Robinson Crusoe. Uh, I teach. Uh, I've, I've got a, a full um, a full course on on how to how to pick stocks and what I'm looking for and and everything else. Well, I'm hoping that you're right there, um, uh, Lee. Uh, the S&P 500, 4,200 would be uh, phenomenal. If, if we can get to 4,200, that will be... I don't think we'll get it today. It would be great if we could. But certainly, um, 4,150, I think that's a realistic goal today. All right, right. Um, yeah, it would have been back in October, about this time in October, yeah. I don't know if it's the 13th or it might have been the 10th or 11th. I can't recall off the top of my head. But that quad witching's on Friday. Uh, trading. So just to put this in, into context now, guys. So today we've had the CPI, which yesterday was one of those strange ones. Today we've had the CPI data drop. Okay, we've seen a bullish move on the on the markets, which I'm now profitable with, by the way. Uh, bullish move on the markets. Uh, tomorrow we've got the FOMC conference and, and the, uh, the the meeting with the FOMC. We've got the uh, the rate hike. Now, let me know in the comments if you want me to stream that live um, because that'll be, drop, that'll be about 2.30 market time, 2.30 uh, p.m. market time, which is a little bit earlier than I would come on for a power hour session. But if you want me to stream the FOMC conference, I was almost falling asleep last time. Uh, for the um, the interest rate hikes uh, tomorrow, I can do that. So that's that's tomorrow. Then on uh, Thursday, so that's Wednesday. On Thursday, we've got the jobless claim, US jobless claims again. We've got the retail sales data again. We've got the Bank of England and the ECB banks all dropping their interest rate hikes all on Thursday, and then as you're rightly saying, they're uh, trading the the, uh, the options market, it's quad witching on the options market, where where you have all, all the expiry, this happens um, like three times, a, uh, three times a year, four times a year, once a quarter, uh, where you've got the expiry of options and, um, uh, and, and various contracts all taking place on the same day. So there's a lot of activity this week, and it's the final time that we're going to get a lot of these macroeconomic catalysts um, across the board uh, this year. So this week, what they're hoping is this, this week will provide enough stimulus for us to have what's known as a, a Santa Claus rally, um, into the end of the year, and uh, we'll have that Christmas rally, and uh, we, we get a bit of bullish action for, the, for a move up towards uh, 2023. Well, it's not like JP Morgan to ever get, get anything wrong, is it, um, Lee? <laughs> but yeah, if it moves up 10%, 10 I can't see it, but... If it moves up 10%, I'll, I'll be quids in because I'm $1,200 up on this right now. It's a lot, which is, which is a lot more than uh, the, the $25, $24,000 down. I was, uh, and it's not a lot until I've realized it. Just saying, I, I've, not, I've not lost any money unless I sell. So I'm, I'm just, just putting this out there that I've got a, a larger account and I'm trading on full leverage right now. So, um, 
I don't know anything about MLGO, by the way. For those of you asking me about MLGO, it's it's his first day's trading. I don't know anything about it. It's up there at fifty dollars. It is, Bob. Yes, it is. Yeah, well, you get a lot of fud about Binance right now because um, SBF's been arrested. So he's going to be... If there's anything to be worried about Binance, if, if Binance has got anything, any skeletons in the closet, it's all going to come out because SBF's been arrested. Yeah, I know you was Penn State. I know you was, but I wasn't seeing it on my scanners, and I, I can't do anything with it because I was in this locked in this trade. Uh, all my equity's tied up right now. Nine twenty seven. Three minutes to the bell. Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, it's it's, it's not huge volume, but we'll see. Question is, will we get a rally at the at the open, or will it? Will we have a bit of a sell off at the open, a bit of a dip and rip, or will we? Will we move back up? Yeah, and and of course with the with the results here, so Oracle should be having a good uh, having a good day. I've not looked at it yet, but it should be having a good day. But MLGO is back below fifty dollars. So what for kind of fifty two dollars for a potential entry there, um, and the move back up. Got a minute to the bell. I lost over twenty thousand yesterday. Get them. I didn't. I didn't trade after the stream. Uh, I, I, I had to pick this. Um, I had to collect the floof and, uh, and 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 look after her. So. She was she was not in a good way yesterday, but she's she's sprightly today. She, she wasn't eating or anything yesterday, but that's that's to be expected after a major after a serious operation, after serious surgery. Yeah, not as glad as I am getting. Get a bit of a pullback on the spy. Four turns on the spy. You know what? I'm not even going to look at this one right now. I'll look at the spy. Bit of a pullback on the spy. There's the bell.
set my stop at just above 76. If it pulls all the way back to 76, I'll get it. Well, that just absolutely pumped. So that's halted now. MLGO is halted. To the upside, this looks like it's going big places today. Yeah, I've got my I've got my stop at seventy six. So if it pulls below seventy six, I'll get out, and it's uh, nowhere near as bad as it, it potentially could have been today. There we go. There we go. I'm happy with that. I'm not happy with it, but... <laughs> Potentially should have got out for 1,200, but uh, look, we're all the best traders in hindsight. Change, change my scanners over now. Okay, let's let's take a look at what's going on in the market. Well, there you go, trading. So MLGO's um, halted to the upside. So this halted at nine thirty. Will resume at nine thirty-five and twenty seconds. Right, let's have a look at what else is potentially moving. Quite a few halts. CCNC halted, Opal halted. Macy's spiking down. CCNC, Opal, Macy's. Yeah, that's about it. Let's have a look. At and move it from yesterday. Gone green on the day. Had a good day yesterday. Eleven dollars is really where this needs where this gets interesting. When does this resume? 35 and 20. So we're 30, it's only 20 seconds. Let's have a look at this. Looks like it's going to gap up slightly, ever so slightly. Wait for the pullback. Might be a 10 minute halt. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a 10 minute halt, this one. MLG out. A minute halt. 
AMAM moving up big time. That's up at 270 now. Um, long cry, far cry from its high of uh, 450. But interesting move up. And on that note, I will take a quick bio break. So give me a couple of seconds. So I'll wait for the spy to do its dip and rip, and then I'll go back in there later. Uh, weekly high created, good opportunity for a short on, on what we're talking there. NCPL kind of selling off. This was the biggest move earlier today. Move is up. INDP, that's not coming back. It's not resumed yet. Uh, we've, got, we've got two minutes before that resumption there. Spy selling off so buy back over the VWAP and, I'm, and then I'm interested it needs to be get rid of that because that's it shouldn't even be on my radar that one I'm not really feeling that one either. Are you seeing anything, guys? Well, the S&P 500, the SPY, the market itself. Don't mind. I don't mind this dip and rip potential. So you've got uh, a dip down, this potentially getting back up above the VWAP. What I would wait for is when it breaks the VWAP, wait for it to come back and test it as support before then moving on to break new highs. That's what I would suggest there. Don't just jump in because it's breaking the VWAP. Wait for confirmation. Got um, NCPL, Magenta. Uh, these are all little penny stocks that I'm not really interested in. Okay. PGN. Melgo just resumed into another halt. Well, this will be another 10 minute halt, five minutes at the very outset. Not officially halted yet, but you try getting filled. Mm 
What did I get out at um, 76? Well, good luck with that, Bob. Hopefully it'll gap up for you, buddy. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, this is looking like a nice gap up, like $3 gap up by the looks of it. Three to five dollars. Getting eighty-four dollars on the uh, on the level one, but I'm seeing um, seeing at least four dollars on the uh, on the uh, on the bid. So Melgo looks like it could it could gap up. Do I have any advice at trading the, the unhold? Depends. If it gaps up, <laughs> ride the momentum. But as soon as it starts trying to fill that gap, if it comes back down to uh, to, to, work, to where it resumes, take some profit. Um and uh and, and, and look for uh, look for the um take some profit before it, 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 it then comes it fills the gap. What you tend to find is is halts, if it, it has a gap, it, it will fill a gap. It does like to fill the gap. All right, I need to get some base hits here. Yes, it's delayed slightly. Uh, data sharp. There is a there is a um, uh, there there is a latency on the YouTube channel. Yes. The high there, seventy five, sixty. So maybe seventy five, seventy five. Be interesting. Good liquidity on it as well, so the spreads are very narrow now. The ATR is is the average true range. And that's the numerical value, yeah. So, two, 22, six, uh, 22 cents, 22, 23 cents is the average true range on this one right now. Well, flip jug, you just go into your, go into your settings and, and ask, um, oh, I've put the wrong, never mind. Put the wrong amount in there. Put five thousand instead of two and a half thousand. Well, that's okay. Let's see, I'll just put a 30 cent trailing stop in place. Let's see if we can't get over 76. And then that means I can just look at other things and let that ride. I'm going to break $76 here. There we go. Right, I should be able to just let that ride now. Why is that? That's because I didn't put a trailing stop in, I put a regular stop. There's my trailing stop. It's a 30 cent trailing stop on there. Um... Okay, so that's a profitable trade. I can I can talk about other things now. The snorer is back, absolutely. And if you want to treat the snorer, I've still got these treats. 
She's looking at me now because she wakes up whenever I rattle the, the, the treat bag. So if you want to treat the snorer, let me know. Just tap the screen. When I get to 3,000 taps, 3,000 likes on, on the TikTok, um, we'll... So 40, 40... This is, this is another 10-minute halt. Uh, so MLGO, or MLGO is another 10-minute halt. So that'll resume at 10.50. Got kind of rejected at 76, but I'm still thinking this is going to move up. So we'll give it, we'll give it a little bit of wiggle room. I can leave that now. Let that, let that move, let that fly. Don't have to watch that. I just have to find something else to trade to keep, keep my eyes, uh, keep my um, attention off it. It's TGM. Oh, this is halted. This dollar moved up big. That's moved up, but you can't trade that not enough. Oh, what was the um what was the trade that uh, the, the 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 guy earlier was talking about? Said it's gonna go uh, go ballistic. I can't remember what he was talk which one he was talking about. I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll have a look at my history. Uh no, that was it. There you go. This is this is um D local. So if you're still on the channel, let me know. Be local. This is going to apparently this is going to eighteen, nineteen dollars today. Uh, one hundred on one hundred and twenty-seven thousand shares being traded. There's seven hundred seven hundred trades being taken on this. So yeah, good luck with that, buddy. Whoever took that bet, your uh, he owes you a tenner. So um, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Some people don't. <laughs> Don't know what they're talking about, but they make so much noise to try and make it think that they do know what they're talking about. And I find those people amusing. Moderna. Let's have a look. Yeah, Moderna's moving up with the market. Oh, I got stopped out. On X SPXL, is it pulled back? What did I get stopped out at? I made 20 cents. Yes. That's a whole... That's a... Thousand bucks, I think. Yeah. That's all right. Made a thousand bucks back. That's fine. We keep, keep doing that. That's a base hit. We like base hits. Uh, we should get a resumption here. Talking of base hits. This should resume in 30 seconds. So let's watch it. Dialogue. Should resume. So we halted at 30, um, 940 39. It's 950, 950 right now. Well, I'm looking at, uh, yeah, it's looking like a, a, a big halt down if um, if anything's to believe from the uh, from the bid price. But I'm getting 84.37 on the level one, so it looks like it's going to halt up. So 85 on the on the ask, but 55 on, on oh, it's big 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 gap down. Uh, so that's a halt downwards. Well. I think it was who said Ross was um, was stuck in that one. 
Oh, it's a false halt. How, how, how in the was that a false halt? Volatility on this is huge. The spreads are like five dollars. Four, four dollars, four, three dollars, three, three, four dollars on the spread. So just be careful with that as well. Alt down is forty six seventy five right now. Alt up fifty seven thirteen. And the spreads are four dollars. It's not shortable from what I can see. Could be interesting. Yeah, well, you've got to be careful with these halts. Is if um, if they if they gap down, you want to ask yourself a question: What's the volatility like? Is it going to get bought up, or do I need to get out of the position? It's going to get bought up, grant, fine. But if it continues to to break lower lows, you need to cut it. And this is breaking lower lows, so I wouldn't hold. I wouldn't advise anybody to hold this right now. Forty six seventy five is the halt down, by the way. Which is where it's at right now on the um, on the bid. I'm not seeing any data on the bid. It's basically at the halt level. It's at the halt level on the bid. Forty six twenty four is the halt level. There you go. It's halted. Well, it's not not halted yet, but it's at the halt level. So it should halt. There you go. Halted to the downside. So that will come back at three minutes past. If this breaks pre-market highs, which currently stand, let's have a look. That 325 is a key level and 335. Hello in Thailand. Yeah, I certainly am. I certainly am. I've got a nice little villa booked for... Um, well, I should stay in a nice little resort for the first week, and then I've got a nice little villa booked, uh, private villa in the mountains, on a volcano, believe it or not, but, um, and an active volcano at that, but uh, uh, in, uh, in the Philippines. It's a nice little cup and handle. Here's your cup. There's your handle. Don't mind scaling into this now. I took big size for the when it was huge volatility, but now I'm thinking that we're scaling into. Yeah, it's great. I'm a, I'm a diver as well, so there's a nice little place uh, in a place called Darwin, which is great for diving. But Apple Island was a, a, a wildlife sanctuary, a turtle sanctuary as well, uh, and some uh, some great coral reefs. So, if you're if you're into um, if you're into diving, scuba or um, or free diving, 
it's, uh, it's, 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 it's probably one of the best places to go if you're, if you're into diving. Oh, stop this one. Miss Thailand, Mr. Thailand. It's, it's, it's equities. Stocks and shares. I haven't used that one direction. What's it, what's, what's it give you? Yeah, NCPL is uh, up there at three three twenties, looking interesting. Yeah, absolutely. It's a bit like my volume by price here that, uh, that you've got here. I've got volume by price candles on here, which is very similar, very similar information to what you're saying. So we've got another couple of minutes. Let's have a quick look at uh, MLGO. We might if this is a five minute halt or not. So this, yeah, five minute halt. Just resumed. Question is, you're looking at 250s on the spreads. $2.50 on the spreads. It's still selling off. $40.28 is the next halt level, which has just reached the... So it's halting down now, so it's um, $40.28 on the halt level there. Um, not quite halted, but it's about to. There you go, halted again. So this will resume at uh, all three. Should do. Well, yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it direction. I'm just getting a bit stubborn with this, um, with this ETF. Spies selling off. The S&P 500 selling off, so I'm getting a bit stubborn here. I'm just going to have to cut this. Again, the low 76, it's gone. Seventy six oh five, and I'm gone. I'll just put a stop in place there. Okay, so there we got stopped out there. So yeah, we're back up to nine thousand to uh, to recover today. That's what we're going to be doing today: is recovering from a heavy loss. I don't want to that one. It's a penny stock. I'm not interested in penny stocks. NCPL, maybe if it gets over 325, will be of interest.
NCPL. I'm glad I wasn't in NCPL. Looking at that over 325. Look at that. We need a bounce at 260. That's a huge sell-off. Did, 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 have they just dropped an offering or something? Because that's horrible. What made it sell off so hard? Mind you, the, the market's selling off as a whole. Everything's selling off with it. Q2 results. So the spy hard sell off. Rid of that off the watch list. Moderna is having a good day for sure. I put what nearly just it broke 200. It's pulling back a little bit. It's having a good day. 20% up on the day for, for a $200 stock. That's that's really good going. 20% move for a $200 stock. Absolutely 100% agree with you there, Neville. This is why you trade with a stop loss. In the open market in particular. The volatility, yeah. How's the dog? Can you not hear her snoring? She's uh, living her best life again. Happy and snoring. Moderna is looking nice. It is. Spreads on Moderna are about 40 cents. So just bear that in mind. It's good liquidity, but it's a, one of these high cap stocks, the, the high flow, high cap. Don't like the, uh, look at it on the five minutes, you've got what I like to call the devil horns, which is a bit, a bit of a worry, so I, I would wait for that to pass. But you've got the devil horns here, which is a, a sign of a, a pending uh, reversal. So you really want to have the next, the next candle close out above $200. So whether it's this one on the five minute, by the way. So you've got a minute to go, and this... Um, this needs to close out above $200, otherwise you've got these devil horns and that's a, a pending pending reversal indicator. How do you use leverage? Basically, you, you, um, your broker will give you more buying power. It will multiply your equity so you've got more buying power, Alexander. And, and I've been trading a few years now. So if you, if you have a, a margin account, uh, by by default, most brokers will by default give you a margin account. If you've got a margin account, they, it will allow you to borrow money from the broker to trade uh, based on what equity position you have with the broker. If you've got $5,000 with your broker and you've got a five, 5x leverage, you can afford to trade up, up to depending on, on your broker's risk um, uh, policies, up to $25,000 worth of, of, of equity.
I'm going to try to break that $200 again. If I was starting, what would I start with? Uh, I would start with a good education. Uh, Alexander if I was starting I would learn how to trade I would spend a few hundred bucks a month on learning how to trade practicing a simulator subscribe to a good a good simulator a, a good uh, scanning system like Benzinga or, or whatever it is learn how to trade first practice in a, sim in a simulator get good at that and then you're looking at I would I don't recommend trying to day trade with less than five thousand dollars uh, that, that's just me some might say your 500 dollars is okay but i would say no it's not because depending on your broker if they're going to charge you commissions and fees uh, you're you're not going to make the gains that are, so you're going to what your, your, your profits are going to get wiped out on a daily basis by commissions and fees so you need i would say you need at least five thousand dollars plus average um to start day trading profitable and you need to be starting small so you want to be looking at maybe a 200 dollars daily gain gross and you might rack up 50 dollars of of um of fees to uh to achieve that so your net gain on the day will be 150 bucks um so that's what you would start off with and then you slowly scale up Oh, hang on a minute. This should resume. And it looks like gapping down yet again. By the looks of it. $38. I've got a resumption at $38 here. This should resume. Should have resumed. 10 seconds ago, let's see. No. Must be a 15 minute halt then. 15 or 20, whichever. But interesting, um, interesting stock today. Would have been nice to have got in it at $20 and, and, and out at, to, at 70, of course, but that's just the way it is. Alright, so the volume seems to be drying up at the moment. Ah, there's no volume on that. It's a nice move, but no volume. What's that? MTZ, no volume. It's difficult to find something with a decent, reasonable price that's got volume because at the moment that's not the case. Most of these stocks that are moving are moving on either very low volume or they're like just penny stocks. And the thing is, for a penny stock to move, if you've got a, a 25 cent stock and it moves 5 cents, it's moved 20%. So, if you take a big size, you can get a 20% gain on that, but also it's 5 cents. I tend to look for at least 10 cents on a move. And I want it on good volume. So it's reliable. Yeah, it's choppy day today, Alistair. It's a very choppy day today. Hustle with Tony is the Instagram. If you go into my, um, uh, Alexander, if you go into my link tree, go into my profile. I've got, what we, I'll, I'll show you, I'll, I'll show you directly. 
let's go back to this spy here for now uh, and I'll show you directly give me a second uh, so this is my laptop and I'll um, I'll guide you through it, Alexander and um, just for you this is what Benzinga looks like by the way uh, and so what's going on with my Okay, so this is what my Benzinga looks like. So these, I, I normally have to pop those out, but you've just seen them. Uh, so if you go into my profile on link uh, on, on TikTok there, uh, Alexander, and click the link, it says the link tree, the TikTok trade. If you're on Twitch or, or ShareVision, you can see the link in the top corner there. It says link tree, the TikTok trader. Okay, it will bring you to this page. So you've got my email, you can email me directly. You've got my Facebook and Twitter profiles. You can DM me on Twitter or Instagram. Um, I've got my Twitch and YouTube channels as well. And of course, if you're on Twitch or YouTube, I've got my TikTok here as well. Um, if you want to uh, get yourself some nice merch like this, for example, why not? What's that down, down here? Like that. Don't know why I'm on this camera, but we'll, we'll, we'll change that in a moment. Uh, and... Uh, then that's the merch get yourself a, a, a hoodie or a sweatshirt or a t-shirt order it now in time for christmas uh if you want to learn how to um how to uh, trade uh, you can get on the day trade with tony course uh, and i'll teach you myself how to trade uh, I am taking bigger swings at the moment. I'm being a little bit more taking bigger risks. It didn't pay off yesterday. It's not paid off yet today, but there's still time. Um, this is a full course. This is a full syllabus. Uh, the first lesson, you can get get that free on YouTube. There's over an hour's worth of, uh, of lecture material there. The total course is about 20 hours of lecture material. <laughs> over 20 hours of lecture material, plus exams to make sure that you're, uh, you're paying attention. The library of, of uh, books, material, reading material that I use to learn how to trade, I'm giving that to you for free. Uh, and then there's an additional swing trading course as well, if you want to learn how to swing trade. And a part of that course is, is, is also options, which is another way of, uh, of, of trading, um, but you don't actually own the stock. Uh, the price is 120 bucks a month, plus tax wherever you are. So if you're in Ireland like I am, it's going to be cost you $146. Well, that's US dollars, not um, Zimbabwe, Zimbabwean dollars or whatever. That's US dollars. So that's um, check that out if you want to, to do that. If you want to uh, find the stock. So if you go back to my Benzinga, this is the scanners that I'm using. I'll just pull up the other two, um, the other two scanners that you can see normally. So these are the two scanners that you normally see on that I'm, I'm scoring. So this is my gap scanner. It tells me what's moved the most intraday since yesterday's closing price. This is the momentum scanner, tells me what's moving over the last 15 minutes. Then I've got my surging scanners here in real time. You can see there it's, it's, it's got for real time. I've got um, signals and alerts here. So OPGN is moving up, got a uh, new high of day there, uh, day high series. I've got price spikes, volatility halt, etc. I've got rolling news here. So this is Benzinga. It's a great product it's absolutely fantastic and if you want to check out benzinga you can do so for 14 days two week take out a two week trial try it for free it's for me i think it's indispensable um it's absolutely fantastic but don't pay the full price uh you can get it for as low as if you take it an annual subscription it works out about 117 dollars a month uh, but you can get 35 percent off using this code here uh you tap that into uh, at checkout and get 35 percent off trade of you trading journal so I've got my trading view open here. Um, so this is for the year. Let's have a look at the detailed results. So yesterday I didn't have a great, so I'm, I'm 30,000 away from 1.2 now, as of yesterday, 40,000 if I include today. Um, but I'm, I'm, I think there's enough volatility in the market to, to get back There's a few nice patterns forming now as well. So check out trade view. I'm, 
I'm in the process of trialing out Trade Anvil. I'm going to take a look at Trade Viz as well. But Trade View for me is brilliant. It gives you all the stats and analysis that you need. Uh, so it's, you can talk about win loss expectation across the year. You can see I've got a, pretty much a two to one ratio. My um, risk reward is, is pretty much two to one. As you can see, my um, my K ratio is over, over seven, but my profit factor is two to one there. Uh, it, that's my equity curve across the course of the year so you can see it's, it's not, not exactly a straight line but I had some big days and big down days as well big swings um and you can see here from a drawdown graph here cumulative drawdown i've had some big the biggest drawdown i've, I've had to come back from is like sixty-two thousand, um which is was just pretty significant uh, but I'm I am trading in bigger size so tra that's just trade trade of you it's, it's a really good tool to use so going back to you Alexander if you want to um, learn how to trade day trade with Tony uh, that's really what you want to be um, uh, checking out if you want to reach out to me directly email me DM me on Instagram Twitter whatever uh, and that's what I would say is how, the best way to, uh, to to reach me and with that I will go back to the charts and we will go back to talking about the market and looking for something to trade yeah I'll, I'll, I'll check out trade of this it's super chip I've not I've not checked uh, not tried it yet I'll, I'll take a look at uh jewel for you there um Alistair So Jewel right now it's not doing anything. Jewel is 461. It was an IPO on Friday. And there's nobody trading it. 94,000 shares, 95,000 shares traded. Um 600 just under 700 uh, trades across the course of the day. There's nobody trading it. It's slightly red on ever so slightly red on the day, but we'll see. So the S&P 500 breaking lows now. So we've 3410. We're halting to the upside now after a big gap down on MLGO. This is Microalgo. Huge volatility on Microalgo. Uh, it's been up as high as uh, over seventy dollars. It's been started off kind of ten dollars. So this is a low of. No, that's not right. Pre-market low of four dollars fifty. We've had a high of seventy-one fifty. So huge volatility across the course of the day. How am I getting on today? Can you not see the um, the screen there, uh, Super Chip? I'm going to have to teach a lot of people how to read, aren't I? Just waiting for a nice setup now, I guess. Not a lot. What I'll do is I'm going to sort the wheat from the chaff here in terms of volume as well. I want at least 500 here and I'm going to put volume 150 here so if it's not got volume I'm not interested there we go TV have a look at the TV and there we go that's popping up nicely Let's have a look if there's a particular catalyst causing this to pop up nicely and will it get over 550 today? It's currently up 12%. Hmm, Grupo TV. Just a um, SEC form submitted, that's all I'm seeing. 10% shorted. Small float, three three million on the float. Not seeing any particular catalyst. 
Um, not great volume. Had a couple of decent volume spikes, but on average, it's not great. The range, ATR is only three cents, so probably not something worth trading right now. Marathi Therapeutics, trying to go green on the day. Up at $40, 41 Nice little cup and handle formation here. If it breaks out, gets over 42 might break out and give you that, uh, what, $5 maybe. I wouldn't say battered, Alistair. It, we were almost battered. We, could, we were, you know, we were 24k down unrealized at one stage. Yeah, give me a second to fix that for whatever reason. There you go. That's better. I am a good ventriloquist. I, I do the snoring when uh, when you think that, that I've got a chow chow because I don't. Fluent Energy Corps. Moving nicely. It's um, nearly 30% up on the day. I've missed most of the move though. That's the thing. Just a case of sit and wait now. She's not. You've got a completely bald belly when you lie like that. You know that. You sit. She's not. She's not the good thing is she's not having to wear the corn of shame. Well, at least not yet. I do not like the corn of shame. Uh, but um, yeah, so complete bald belly. Sure to pull it on mutt. There's there's the patient, the recuperating patient. He's uh been through the what we've been through the mill over the last couple of days, haven't you, Miyako? You've been through the mill, haven't you? Hey? Hey? Been through the mill? Big bald belly where they've been shaving you and bald patches on your arms where they've been injecting you. Hey? You'll get some treats later, don't worry. No, you're not waking up, no. Lazy. So that's the lazy chow chow. So she's had all of, all her belly shaved so they could actually operate on her. Bless. Yeah. Neither which way, I'm a, I'm a winner this uh, this year. I've, I've been taking some big swings. If you in case you hadn't noticed, I've been taking some big swings this week because I wanted to get to my goal uh, before I fly out because I don't really want to be trading uh, next week, and it's probably not gone my way at the moment. But hey, look. I've come back from a lot worse than 9,000 down on a course of a day, but I need a bit of volatility, I need a bit of volume. And right now we're not getting any, so let's let's see what, uh, what else happens. And this one, it halted up, then gapped down, halted up again. Go figure. So this is looking like a... It looks like it's going to gap up this time. Hold it up, but it looks like it's going to gap up. So we might get a bit more volatility on uh, MLGO. Let's see. Uh, very risky to trade. Don't trade it unless you can afford to lose what you're putting in. It's very risky. Am I shaving my belly before my holiday? I don't need to shave my belly, Alistair. I'm a, I'm a Chippendale. I don't, I don't grow body hair. 
All, all the hair that I grow is on my face. On the head, of course. Hold on, this is a wig. Let's see. I'm getting a bit boring now, so I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to lock up the stream. I'll see how I am with this. Actually, I've got a visitor coming round to... Uh, I've got... To, I'm interviewing my um, my dog sitter this evening, so I probably won't be a power hour. Uh, but I'll, I'll drop the... Um, I'll drop the... Um, Trade, re trade, cap trade day trade recap later on YouTube. Uh, as I say, there may not be a power hour if uh, if the, the the dog sitter is still here. If I say dog sitter, I've got some coming into a uh, uh, house sit, so costing me a small fortune. But hey, look, she's worth it. Uh, so um, yeah, I've got someone coming in, being interviewed for uh, for the position of dog sitter while I'm away, and I will uh, lock up now and see you guys tomorrow. 90 minutes before the market opens. 8 a.m. market time, 1 p.m. here. Have a good one, guys.